All right, let's do this. Let's make a dating sim. We should probably start with introductions. My name is Ashton. You might be asking yourself, Ashton, why are we making a dating sim? Who are you to tell me how to make a dating sim? I'm nobody. I'm just some game developer. But I've made four games. And I can show you how to make four games. Because it's really easy. I failed my coding class. And if I can make a game, so can you. I'm just kidding, obviously. This is me. My name is Ashton Sharon. I go by Last Life Creations Online, as I'm sure you figured out by now. I'm a SCAD student. I'm a senior in game development with a minor in painting. I also do cosplay on the side. And I'm in specifically narrative design, which is the part of game development that involves writing stories. So for me, and for probably you, a dating sim or a visual novel is one of the best ways to create a game just by yourself. I'm assuming that if you're here, you want to make a dating sim, but maybe you want to make something else. You can kiss your OCs, but you could also make a murder mystery. Either way, we're going to be making a game that can get you hired for narrative design. We are doing this start to finish, all the way down from coming up with the idea to publishing the actual game on like Steam or the App Store. And I should probably say I am making this series of videos uh, specifically as a favor for my buddy Chris. Hi, Chris. Um, but if anybody else actually like follows along, wants to make a game, um, feel free to ask me any questions, like leave comments, asking anything, and I'll try to answer them in the next video. Uh, this is basically a syllabus, so each of these uh, bullet points is going to have its own video walking you through each step. So we're going to start by actually talking about what the heck a dating sim is. These are some of the most popular dating sims out there, and yes, Doki Doki really is a dating sim. I don't know what to tell you. But yeah, Dream Daddy, Doki Doki, and The Arcana, which is a mobile dating app, all of these games were made using some elements of RenP, which is the program we're going to be using today. And it's really easy to use. But generally, a dating sim, or any visual novel like this, is a game where it is mostly player interaction with NPCs, and it's all about making different choices. So, those supplies. We're actually going to leave my little guide here really quick. The things that you're going to need before you even open your computer are basically the ability to write things down and extremely basic artistic skills. You really don't have to be that good at drawing. You really don't even have to be that good at writing. You just have to be willing to learn. And I will say this uh, guide, we're going to do a lot of stuff. I'm not going to teach you how to write. And I'm not going to teach you how to draw because there are plenty of other resources out there that are probably way better than me at both of those things. But you need a basic ability to write, a basic ability to draw. You're going to need a computer that can run Windows 10 or the iOS equivalent. That's pretty much it as far as hardware goes. You might want a drawing tablet. I'll be using a drawing tablet, but you really don't need one. And then the program that we're going to be making our games in is called RenP. I'm going to have this link down in the description. It's pretty easy to download. It's totally free. And it has a really good quick start menu. Let's see if I can find it from here. There we go. It's really easy to pick up and learn. And we're still going to walk through this later. But this is what we're going to use because most people that use narrative design in indie development will use not specifically RenP, but Python coding. And it's just a good skill to have. Like I said, one person can make a game. I've done it before. You can do it too. And this is the only part where you're, we're maybe going to be purchasing anything for money. Uh, you're going to want some kind of drawing program. I recommend Clip Studio Paint just because it's what I know how to use. Um, and it, oh god, forgive my background. <laughs> It lets you do a lot of stuff. So these are sprites from a game that I've already made. Um, I like Clip Studio Paint because it has a lot of the same functions as Photoshop, but it's cheaper than Photoshop and it goes on sale really frequently. I think it's currently $25. It's usually, it's never more than $50, um, but you can get it. I got it on sale. It's two downloads. It's fantastic. 
and you can do a lot of the same stuff as Photoshop, but it's directed specifically towards like concept art for like animation, games, manga, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of customization, like we can put bandages on characters, we can change their expressions, um, we can even change like outfits and like hair and makeup. And we're going to go through all of that later, but you're going to need some kind of drawing program and some ability to draw with it. This is what Rempy looks like once we boot it up. Um, we're going to get way more into this later on, but it's a pretty easy to use format. You're not going to have this because this is one of the other games that I've made, but it'll have these two. Like I said, super easy to learn. There's really no excuse not to get it. So we have our list of supplies. The next part is kind of the supply list you have to make up on your own, which is your concept. It can be pretty much anything. I'm going to be making specifically a dating sim for the sake of this tutorial, but you could make pretty much anything with the dialogue options available to you. Um, there are a lot of games that are similar to this that can be made using the Rempe program. Um, games like uh, The Uncle That Works for Nintendo. Um, even like the early part of Undertale could technically be made in Renpy. It's really, it's doable. But we're going to be focusing on dating sims and specifically visual novels just because those are the ones I know how to make and they're the ones that you can make too. When I say documentation, I mean uh, actually writing down your idea, creating mood boards. Um, for the sake of education, we're going to be using a concept that I'm just kind of coming up with as I go along. Um, but we are going to be looking at a couple different references, and this is my basic mood board. This is something you absolutely have to make. It's going to be your visual references, it's going to be your inspiration. So I would like to make a game that focuses around sort of the visual style of James Jean's artwork from The Fables. It's a really fantastic comic series, and I really love James Jean's artwork for it. Um, specifically, I'm going to be looking at Flycatcher's character, or uh, Ambrose as he's also known. I'm looking at some of the bizarre visuals from the Monkey Tree uh, music video by Mother Mother, and I'll link that in the description because it's a really cool video and also you should listen to Mother Mother. <laughs> um, and I'm also currently taking an art history class that talks about early medieval art, so I'm really fascinated by the like interiors of, like this is the Aryan baptistry, um, this is where the oracle at Delphi would have sat. Um, I'm really fascinated by those ancient interiors and that artwork. And then the Lord of the Rings, because anytime you talk about medieval fantasy, you have to talk about the Lord of the Rings. So the concept that we're kind of working with for the sake of these tutorials and for the sake of the game that I'm going to make is we have our player character is going to be like a knight in this sort of old world kingdom. Um, and you would be meeting with different characters like your king, um, you know, religious leaders, and you're trying to solve different problems in your kingdom and also hopefully date some people. We got dilfs, we got male wives, we got girl bosses, we got himbos, we got herbos, we got it all. We're gonna see those guys later though. We're gonna see those next episode when we talk about characters. For now, we just have a basic idea of what our world is gonna look like and what our story is gonna be. Before we talk about do uh, documentation, I do want to talk about something kind of complicated in game development, but also specifically in split choice games. And it's the continuity and the canon. When you think about a classic story, you kind of think about like the hero's journey, you're thinking about like starting here and ending here, you know, in one place it's kind of cyclical, there's no branching off. Um, but if you remember, like, when you were a kid, some of these, like, choose your own adventure books, that's kind of what we're doing. We're splitting off. And this is a pretty basic example of one of the most uh, simplistic options you can make is going to be something where your different options will end up in the same place. But in all reality, the kind of games that we're going to be making are probably going to end up looking something a little bit more like this where each of your branches branches into more options, into more options, and gives you all your different endings and choices that you can play throughout the game. For the sake of something like a visual novel dating simulator, your first choice would be maybe, you know, which character you're gonna pursue. 
And then from there you would have all these little choices that will eventually lead back to each other for your either like good ending or bad ending or like neutral ending. But now we're going to talk really quickly about documentation. There are a lot of different ways of documenting something and honestly any of them are fine. I'm going to show you the way that I've done it in the past and I'll actually share a copy of this document down below so that you can use it as a template. But this is a game that I wrote uh, in about 10 weeks for my portfolio class, ISCAD. And it was called Mindless and is a point and click game. Um, I'll actually probably show you some of the code from it. I'll probably show you some of the art from it. But this is really the basic amount of documentation that you need. You can see each of the characters has their own bio. It talks about the overarching plot of the game. But you have to have an idea of where your game is going to end up and where it's going to start. You don't need to know everything in the middle yet, but you kind of want to have a good idea. So that's where this specific page, a scene, comes in. This is the way that the game would be written. Um, some people will write total scripts. Um, if you're something like dramatic writing or interested in something like film, you would be writing an actual script with dialogue. The way that I do it and the way that I'm going to teach you to do it, no, this is not necessarily the right way to do it, is you're going to have something sort of like this, a document with your overall concept, and you're going to have in your script, now this is kind of the complicated part, the script for the game, not the script for the dialogue, you're going to have these, oh sakes alive, you're going to have these like hashtag sections of the game. and for me, this is how I write out my uh, plot. I don't actually write line by line, I don't write the script, I just write the basic plot beats, things that have to happen. So for the example that I'm using here in this game that I wrote before, the main character um, is a racer. He gets knocked unconscious and kidnapped, so then we're talking about, you know, when he goes racing, he wakes up after that, and then, you know, his head hurts, he's really confused. We scroll down a little bit more, I actually probably deleted most of the guides here, but we'd scroll down a bit more and you would get notes for, I did delete most of this to clean up my code, but I should have a couple of notes, there we go. You have the main plot points of the game separated out. And we're going to get more into what the script looks like later, but um, as I said before, you can do pretty much any documentation that works for you, but you have to document what you're working on. Um, I also have done it this way before, so my side-by-side -side with the original character art versus the artwork that ended up in the final game. I did a couple of those. That also works too, um, just as long as you know what you're talking about, what the characters mean, and where everything is going. So before you come back to the next video, which for me I'm going to be releasing sometime next week, you're gonna to wanna to have these three things. You're gonna to wanna to have your basic concept, so whatever your story is, is gonna be about maybe some information about the characters. You wanna have the mood boards, the writing, whatever it is that you need to create your idea. You're gonna want your art program and something to draw with. You know, it could be your mouse, it could be a tablet. You can even do this on pen and paper if you really wanted to. It's not impossible, it's been done before. Um, but you wanna have some idea of what you're going to be drawing in general and you're going to want documentation of everything that you've started to come up with so far you can even keep a personal journal like i said i'm going to share some documents that i use that help me keep everything in order but whatever works for you is whatever works for you for the sake of a game like this you would be the only one looking at it anyway i will teach you some of the best practices for overall game development stuff that i've learned um, both from working in game development and also just from having actual classes and stuff. But just because they're the best practices doesn't mean they're the only available options. So next time we're going to get into talking about our characters more. We're going to get into drawing their characters and ideas like sprites and costume changes. And that's why we don't need RenP yet, but we definitely want to have that art program. But I'll see you next time and we'll talk about characters more then.